Final Cut Pro on an iPad. It's here. Apple just rolled out the much anticipated app today. And over the last week, I've been taking it on a test drive. Does it live up to its hype? Hi, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker. And over the last decade, I've made it my job to show people around the world that tech can be easy, fun, and exciting. On this channel, I give you special access to the products I review, the events I attend, and all the exciting people I get to meet along the way. So if that's your jam, give this channel a like and subscribe, and I'll help you find the right gadget to match your needs. This is my hands-on with Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Ever since Apple launched iPads with the same chips found on MacBook Pros, there was only one app that I wanted on an iPad, Final Cut Pro. I've been using it to edit videos for this channel ever since I launched many, many years ago. Obviously, video editing requires a lot of power, but now that some iPads, like the iPad Pro, are powered by the same M2 chip that's on the MacBook Pro, it makes perfect sense that apps like Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro come to iPads too. The app is free to download from the App Store, but to use it, you will need to either pay a $4.99 per month subscription fee or $49 annually, which comes out to be cheaper. You'll also need an iPad with Apple Silicon. Basically, it's the most recent iPad Air and the last two iPad Pro releases. If you have something like Apple's Magic Keyboard, then some shortcuts will work, but this is a touch-based device after all. So the beauty of FCP for the iPad is that Apple has designed it to be touch first. In a way, you could say that on an iPad, you can finally touch your media. So for example, you can pinch out to expand your timeline. You can swipe to scrub through it, press and hold to drag and drop clips and effects into your timeline, tap and drag to edit the length of your clips, tap to reach the inspector, and tap to share. Everything feels intuitive. Apple is also introducing a new tool just for the iPad version called the Jog Wheel. To activate, tap on this icon right here. This tool will show up and you can place it on any side of your window. And now you have a virtual Jog Wheel that gives you frame by frame control over your timeline. Now, if you own an Apple Pencil, you'll also love a new feature called live drawing, which basically lets you use your pen to create animated titles or graphics. Here's how it works. You just tap on this pencil icon up here, and over here is what I want to be my title card. Let's go ahead and use the pencil to draw and animate our title sequence. Over here on the bottom, it's the same tools that's on the Notes app when you use the Apple Pencil, so you'll be very familiar. I'm gonna click the pen tool and maybe just do something in white. And now let's hit done. And you can see down here on the timeline, there is a new layer called live drawing, which stretches to fill the same duration of the clip that we had selected earlier. Let's go ahead and hit play. I don't remember the last time I got to celebrate Lunar New Year in the Bay. Now, if you'd like to customize that a little bit more, you can go ahead and dive into the inspector. From here, I can change the opacity of the text, blend mode. I could set the length for which the, uh, the drawing takes place. So let's say 5.68 seconds. Last time I got to celebrate Lunar New Year in the Bay, but I'm glad I'm finally home. Obviously my handwriting sucks, but just imagine the possibilities are endless when creativity is involved. On the latest gen iPad Pros running M2 chips, Apple introduced a feature called Hover that lets you use your Apple Pencil to preview tools before you use them, like the size, shape, and texture of brushes on Procreate. On Final Cut Pro for the iPad, you can quickly skim and preview footage just by hovering your Apple Pencil over your timeline. I 
recently set up a studio in my Lego room slash office. It's a three camera setup that allows me to record unboxings alone. All three cameras record three different angles. And with Final Cut Pro for the iPad, I can easily edit these unboxings with a feature called multi-camera editing. Okay, first let's start a new project and import some footage. We're going to do it straight off a memory card. Mine is called Untitled. Let's dive in, find the files I need, and import them. And now that I've imported all my files, I can hit select, select the clips I want, tap and hold, and create multi-cam. I'm gonna call it unboxing part one and make sure that I synchronize using audio. And then from there, tap create, and it's created the multi-cam clip. From there, we can drag the multi-cam clip to the timeline. And over here on the bottom of the screen, notice there's a section called multi-cam. And now you have all three different angles. And as you play your clip. Hey guys, I'm Michael Josh and you're watching Gadget Match. I'm a little bit late to the party, but better late than never. Today, we're unboxing the new Nomad Ultra Orange Sport Band for the Apple Watch. So I like that frame, but now I wanna cut to camera three or angle three. All I have to do is press this one and it will cut to my top shot. All right, let's go. And then maybe from here, I wanna to switch to angle one, the over the shoulder shot. All you need to do is tug and pull. And then maybe from here, I wanna catch my reaction so I can hit angle two. Ooh, look how nice and orange that is. Now, what I really love about Final Cut Pro for the iPad is how Apple is leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning to automate some really complicated tasks and making them easy. A feature like auto crop is perfect when you're editing a video for TikTok with footage that was shot in landscape. Instead of manually having to use keyframes to crop a clip, auto crop intelligently adjusts footage to keep your subject in frame. Let's see how it did. Another cool one is called Scene Removal Mask. For best results, you'll need something like this where the background isn't very busy. Final Cut Pro comes with plenty of effects, transitions, titles, backgrounds, objects, and soundtracks. Let's go uh, tap on titles and find a nice title. There's one over here that I wanna use. It's called Title Over Footage and the pack is called Skylight. Let's just tap and hold and drag over the footage. Now from here, we can dive into Inspector and then let's select the text. So we want it to say New York City. Now, as you can see, the problem over here is that the text is covering my face. So what we need to do is tap and hold and copy that and then tap over here and paste at playhead. Let's drag it up top. And now that you have two layers, you can now go to effects. Under masks and keying, look for the effect called scene removal mask. Tap and hold to drag it over the main clip. And now, as you can see, you have the title behind me. Even if my hair is moving in the background, it's cut out pretty well. Sometimes it's not perfect, but this normally takes hours to do. But here on FCP for the iPad, it was instant. I've always been one of those guys who've questioned the need for really good cameras on a tablet. But Apple is a firm believer in devices that can record, edit, finish, and deliver all from one device. Basically, shoot, edit, and share. While you can use your iPad's camera app from a project on Final Cut Pro, you can tap on this icon to access Pro Camera Mode with easy access to settings like white balance, exposure, the ability to monitor audio levels, you can even turn on this auto peaking feature. Now it's time for some quick fire Q&A. Can you share projects with SCP on a Mac? Yes, you can. Apple is rolling out an update for Final Cut Pro on the Mac so that you can open up projects that you started on your iPad. All you have to do is from the iPad, just tap share. 
Final Cut Pro for iPad project. Airdrop that file to your Mac, and from there, you can open the project. What file formats are supported? You can edit a whole bunch of video formats, including ProRes and ProRes RAW natively. What about third-party templates? Right now, it doesn't work, but third-party support is coming soon, and soon you'll be able to use your favorite apps like FX Factory or Motion VFX. So, is Final Cut Pro for the iPad worth checking out? That's an easy definitely, and that's because Apple is actually letting you test the app for free for one month, and then if you like it, you can just keep on using it for $4.99 a month, and then you can cancel anytime you don't need it anymore. If you have an Apple Silicon powered iPad, whether you use FCP on a Mac or not, I think Final Cut Pro for the iPad is an excellent tool for editing on the go. And that was our hands-on with the iPad's most anticipated app. Will you be downloading it and giving it a try? Let me know in the comments section below. If you haven't already, subscribe to this YouTube channel. And while you're at it, hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we upload. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And for news and updates, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.